Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mara, and I'm a student of the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center here in Halifax. And today we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of a book launch or book review uh, of this book called The God Experience Return to the Source. And I have the pleasure of being joined by all three authors of this book, Judy Johnson, Debbie Castle, and Ken O'Donnell. Thank you for being here. As you can see, I've got a lot of ticks and tabs on this book. <laughs> I really enjoyed reading it. And, you know, one of the things that um, <clears throat> occurred to me when I saw the book, the title, The God Experience, Return to the Source, I particularly loved this idea of returning to the source. And that sounds like a really lovely idea. Um, but the God Experience, I wonder, um, exactly what that means. You know, what is the God paradigm that, that you're presenting in this book? Because I certainly, um, over the years, have come <laughs> to uh, have some baggage around this word, this G word, God. <laughs> I can now use it, but uh, I've certainly had to disinfect it and come around to it because there's so many different beliefs about, um, about God. And so if you could speak to uh, the... Um, what does this mean? Like, what is the construct or paradigm of God that's being presented in this book? Um, Ken, can you start us off, please? Yeah, I think it's um, one of the things that we try to do in the book is to get a sort of a universal idea of this one that people remember as the supreme, the divine God, Allah, Jova, Shiva, the great spirit, and so on. And, and the way I look at it is, you know, all of the different traditions are like um, the spokes of a wheel, you could say. So wherever the spoke is, you know, at the edge of it, that's where people are believing and praying and reporting to something that they consider as, as more elevated than themselves. In fact, um, in the book, there's a bit of a study that shows us that 70% of the world population uh, believe in a god or the god mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember so reading. these different spokes right they they, they they look different when you look at them at the edge but if you go along each one of them to a central hub then you get a fair idea that territory where the central hub is is called spirituality so this is really a spiritual approach to god rather than a religious one Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if you go, there's so much entomology connected with this because uh, religion means to reconnect. It's basically in Latin, really gari means to reconnect. It means re means again. It means a source that we've forgotten somehow that we have to get back to mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to reconnect. So the connection means between me here, my individual being, and caught up in my own stuff and connected with his source. Who's the one source for all of, all of the spokes? Gotcha. So one of, the intentions, one of the intentions then of this book is to help an individual reconnect, make that connection more, more in daily life. That exactly. That's, that's, I mean, that's the intention. I mean, we had a lot of fun putting it together mm -hmm. based on, because we, we meditate, all of us, and so our meditation, Raj Yoga meditation, is that exactly, you know, the, to try to make that connection. Yoga also means connection, funnily enough. Right. So to make the connection between the, 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 the me, the being here in my life, with, with the one who everyone remembers one way or the other. Beautiful, beautiful. And ultimately, that's what, it, that ultimately that's what the soul is longing for, that experience of transcendence and connection. Um, Judy and Deb, would you like to add to or any other comments on the God paradigm in this book and the intention? Sure. Um, I love what Ken has uh, introduced in terms of the additional research we did in developing the book, but it was a really personal approach that we took with each other to uh, come out of this practice of meditation where we've made connections and had conversations with God and and talking with other people of other faiths and that sounded strange to some of my friends 
And so wanting to explore that, I talked to Judy and she was working on a project with Ken about returning to the source. And um, I said, we should be writing about this because our own experience, and we have a, a hub here in Canada, a virtual hub. And when we did this, I was able to have conversations with people across Canada about God. And I just loved it because this book was the practice before we wrote it and I got to have those conversations and a lot of that reflects how I think about the energy of me and God and what I saw other awaken in other people. Judy, do you want to add anything? I, I think I'd emphasize the experience part as both of you have said, you know, and that the source is actually the experience we can have of the divine presence and that that is before all of the words and mental constructs and and notions that we give so i think in our conversations what i found so interesting was trying to find the word that captured the experience which is what a writer is trying to do all the time and and it, you know it took me back to just even as a small child how much i always felt an invisible presence like my invisible friend but then as i got into religion and various different religions in my life there were different names given to that and different ideas about and i didn't like that he's punishing and this and that and so and it didn't jive with my experience at all so uh, for me the aspect of this is a god experience so we get past the construct and into the actual personal experience got it hence the word experience which i love um, because it bypasses all of that you know some of those teachings which may have been you know been ouch points for us in the past i certainly have had that experience um i had a chance to review the book again in preparation for this uh, fireside chat we're having here and uh, when i first read it which was several months ago um what occurred to me was wow there's some distinctions here about about god that i hadn't learned before or that were, were sort of new to me or different uh, for me to uh, to see uh, in terms of this paradigm and one of the things that um, um, I'd love more input on or is curious about was that you know mostly uh, I think we see God as being all-powerful and yet in the world right now I mean right now we're in a pandemic we see there's many things that are quite negative in the world there's suffering there's pain there's war and so on and, and it seems to me that uh, that the book is saying look you know god is all powerful and is this divine source of love but does not really have you know a mandate over what occurs here on a physical plane god can't stop the pandemic god can't you know prevent violence from happening it, there's sort of a separation between what's happening on the physical plane and um and another level of consciousness where this divine being um is present so um, I wonder if, if, if you can talk more about how does this work and, and why is this helpful now, this sort of uh, discernment about, about God and what's happening here on the physical plane. So, um, Ken, can you, would you like to start us off? <laughs> well, sure. Um, you see, the whole thing about presence, as Judy was saying, it's not a physical presence. It's a feeling rather than, you know, like Romeo said to Juliet, wherever I go, you are in my heart. But if you did a heart operation on him, you won't find Juliet in his heart, literally. <laughs> so it's a feeling. So uh -huh. the presence is a feeling rather than a literal physical fact. Mm -hmm. the power is a spiritual thing rather than a physical power. And I, rem I remember that I was talking to a, a, many years ago, a, a victim of the Holocaust. And she was now an older woman. And she said, no, I don't believe in God. He, how he allowed that to happen. And I said, no, but I don't believe in such a God either. Now, the, 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 I believe that God is a source of spiritual power. And not, you know, blowing the, the you know, making the leaves move and, and the earthquakes happen. Like you take a, 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 an insurance policy, there's a clause that says you're not covered if an act of God happens. And an act of God is like a an earthquake or a, you know right. <laughs> or something yeah that what a definition 
the thing is a lot of the things that we don't understand somehow or the other we we blame or put the load on god in a way mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it, at this time we need we need spiritual power so that we can face whatever we have to face ourselves uh, and therefore god is a source of spiritual uh, support and power and strength and so on rather than you know making my it's our faith that helps us it's like yeah. someone has a faith and they get well it's the faith that helped them wasn't that god interfered with the with the surgeon's hands right mm-hmm. it's our faith and our understanding in our own minds therefore that make things happen or not happen and mm-hmm. we need spiritual power for that and god is the source of that spiritual power mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so god is a source of that power for us to, to give us strength and, fi- and and to give us strength to face what's in front of us here rather than the creator of these things which would be acts of god as you said yeah, there's, there's a game going on between souls and each other, between souls and matter, and mm-hmm. therefore we have all of the things happening in this physical plane, and in souls in God. So there are three sort of forces in a way, and they interact in a, in a specific way. Now, it's our lives that we're we're in the we're in all of us uh, in the middle of our own lives, and therefore what surrounds us we've had something to do with creating it wasn't like you know god did this or god that there's a big process but because we can only see a little bit of it we can't understand the context but if we can see the whole bit wow that's why things are happening oh that's fascinating that's wonderful um what else debbie Um, i'll jump in again um we wanted to get God as the editor of this book, but he said, no, no, no. It's not my job to be down here playing around with you guys. You're doing a pretty good job. And that's been my experience that that energy of when I do things that are helpful and beneficial to others, I kind of elevate up a little bit from some of the, the problem areas. And I feel like at this time in the world, more and more people are of the sense of returning to the source it almost feels upside down the source is beyond us not deep deep down under us right Mm. and so that sense of elevating my energy to an energy that vibrates with goodness with love and that's the power i think ken's talking about and you begin to feel it in you and i think that's where people got confused or or got this sense, some who were really good, they started thinking about them as godlike, And it's kind of a, a memorial to God. I think he stayed up above the mire that we've created here, but we, through our prayers, meditation, and other forms of consciousness raising, our, our, our attempts to get close to God and return to that sense of, of purity and peace and love mm-hmm. and that's the power in it for me i think mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. beautiful yeah that's beautiful um how about you judy what do you want to hop on hop in on this one um yeah i love what there's i love what they're saying um i think that in my my short time in christianity in this birth i was always taken with this the the word the the slogan um god helps those who help themselves and I think I was intrigued by it because I didn't really understand how that worked. Like, what did I have to do to get God's help? And I thought I had to be good and then I would earn God's help. And if I was just good enough, which I never seemed to be able to be, then I would get God's help. And so I think for me, coming to study this meditation and learning a little bit more about God, the blending the, the karma of the East you know, with this love for God from the West together really made the right equation for me that if I spend a lot of my time trying to do something so that I can get God's help and it's the wrong thing, then I'm exhausted and I lose my energy and I get frustrated with God. Like I'm working so hard. How come you're not helping me instead of, Oh, if I understand the right relationship there, that it's it's a partnership. And my part is just to connect to that purest of energy, which is also in me, 
not that God is in me, but that I have a pure point of energy in me. And that's the part of me that can connect to God. And that together, that can lift me, my consciousness out of whatever I'm experiencing, so that I find different solutions. So God's power is more the power that can sort of melt a hard heart you know, or dissolve like a barrier in my thinking, in my consciousness, my attitude. And so only if I'm interested in that, can he work with me? If I'm, you know, sitting there saying, I hate my neighbor, God, would you just make him go away? I mean, I, God's not going to show up for that. He's not a hateful God. So I just think that, you know, really for me, this, this balance of this partnership with God, I have to know my part in order to be in partnership with God. Mm -hmm. It's really nice what you're saying, Judy, because Judy and I have known each other a long time. And for about half that time, I don't think ever either of us ever said the word God. Never. And Never. then we started noticing things about each other and how we were talking, and God started appearing in the conversation. So I kind of love hearing how you're experiencing it now. It's great. Okay. Yeah, but the, the thing is that, I mean, most of people these days are that I know anyway, are very eclectic. That means they have all sorts of opinions right. and they've tried many things. Yes. So our intention with this book is not to convert anyone from whatever they believe, but it's actually to help them. If they want to become a better Christian, let them become, if they want to become a better, you know, a better Muslim, let them become. Of course, there are a lot of people, 30% of the world population don't, don't uh, believe in, in a, a source like that. But they believe in something higher. So even though if you can read between the, the lines and just you know, put in the place of God what you feel is the highest thing for you, mm -hmm. then it will work. So in that case, you know, people don't need to believe in God to be able to take advantage of this book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's why when we um, were writing, we knew this exploration piece. So each chapter has a, a quality, but inside that, along with some quotes and some meditations, there's an activity that each person who's a reader can explore mm -hmm. and discover for themselves, which I really, I found useful and we found useful in the conversations across Canada, you know people online talking about it and finding out, wow, I hadn't thought of that. So there's a good, good chunk of this uh, book that's a personal exploration, which is nice. Mm -hmm. That's what I really like. That's what I really loved about it. The exercises, the meditations, the, the reflective aspects of it, which would then be um, very beautiful and practical, no matter what your faith um, and, uh, mm -hmm. and just helping you reconnect with that God experience. And it is such a personal relationship, isn't it? As Judy was saying, like it is so individual. And um, so um, the God experience returned to the source. Uh, any last words, uh, Judy, <laughs> Ken, or Debbie? I really love hearing these, uh, these uh, reflections and answers to these questions that were kind of burning questions for me. Um, Thank you, Mara. And thank you to Ken and Deb. Beautiful to have been through this experience with you. Yeah. yeah lovely. Uh, the thing is that I'd like just to say that um, just keep, whoever takes up the book, uh, keep an open mind. Um, mm. And you, you probably enjoy it much more than if you come towards this thing with all of your baggage, as, as you were saying, Mara. Mm -hmm. so thanks for working with you folks it's been lovely experience yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. i'll second that uh yeah. and um end with the kind of notion that um as ken said open mind if you dig in the book and see a quality that appeals to you read that forget the rest of it and enjoy that bit of uh uh what we wanted to offer as a connection and ability to reconnect with the source. So thank you very much. And yeah, thank you team for working beautiful. together so wonderfully. Thanks everyone. That's beautiful. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye.